Hey, it's Down Flipping Science. We're talking about keystone species. So, the science understanding we're going to look at the keystone species play a critical role in the maintenance of an ecosystem. Explain the significance of keystone species in their ecosystem. So what is a keystone? A keystone is the stone that's at the top of a stone arch or a masonry arch. So here we can see a keystone here, a keystone here, and a keystone here. The mass of the arch, the rest of the arch that doesn't include the keystone, and anything on top of the um, arch, so in this case for this bridge, everything on top of this bridge, all relies on this keystone to hold the other stones in the arch together. So if you remove that stone, then this stone here would collapse in on itself, which would lead other stones to collapse in on themselves, and eventually your arch would just collapse. This is part of the analogy that we're using to describe keystone species. So a keystone species is similar to a keystone in an arch, in that if the keystone species is removed, there will be big impacts on the rest of the arch, and in that case, the arch is the ecosystem. So they have a disproportionate effect on the ecosystem compared to their abundance. What that means is, um, compared to the numbers of the individuals and the species in the ecosystem, the numbers might be quite small. But the effect of removal is quite large because you can lead to big changes in the ecosystem from that removal. You can get changes in the ecosystem in terms of other species numbers, and those changes in those species numbers can have more effects on the ecosystem that will affect other things as well. So by removing keystone species from a ecosystem, other species within that ecosystem as well as the habitats in the ecosystem can also be dramatically altered. Um, and here's a good example over here with um, sea otters for example. So sea otters are the keystone species in this sea kelp um, ecosystem in the ocean, uh, Pacific Ocean. So uh, kelp is a plant that grows in the ocean. Um, it's an important food source for many species. The kelp is predated upon by sea urchins. Sea otters eat sea urchins. So if you remove the sea otters, the numbers of sea urchins increase since they don't have a predator that eats them anymore. Since the numbers of sea urchins increase, the amount of kelp that the sea urchins um, eat also increases. If you remove the kelp, you remove, remove food for other species in the ecosystem, and this can lead to big impacts. So the sea otters are very important, even though their numbers might be relatively few. So we're going to look at some other examples of keystone species. Uh, wolves are a keystone species in Yellowstone National Park in that ecosystem. Um, they've been removed from Yellowstone since the late 1800s, early 1900s by hunting. Um, and so they were completely removed by about the 1930s. They were introduced in the mid-1990s um, in specific parts of Yellowstone Park to see what effect they would have. They were present in the park before humans were around, they were removed by humans, and then they were put back in by humans. Wolves are apex predators. Their job is to kill herbivores, and usually large herbivores. Um, they might also kill um, carnivores too. They're predators. They eat whatever they can catch. Here's a picture down here of uh, some wolves from Yellowstone hunting, hunting an elk, for example. So elk is one of the large grazing herbivores that are present in Yellowstone. Without the wolves, the number of these big grazing herbivores increase significantly. And the impact of that is reduction in plant cover since they're grazing lots of the plants. So here we have a picture of uh, before the wolves were introduced to this area of Yellowstone Park. We can see the trees are being pared back by the herbivores that are eating them. Another impact was because there were large numbers of grazing animals, uh, beavers, which require um, certain conditions in their ecosystem, they require larger trees and smaller bushes. The smaller bushes and larger trees are being trimmed back too because of the presence of the herbivores. So their habitat is overrun by the grazing her herbivores, so they can't compete with that, so the beaver population has decreased as well. The reintroduction of the wolves has been studied very, very heavily, and it's been found that the number of grazing herbivores has decreased, so the number of large elk, for example, has decreased. And because they have decreased, the uh, plant mix has changed completely. So we're getting regrowth of plants that normally, uh, that used to be eaten by the large herbivores. We've also seen an increase in beaver numbers because of the reduction in the herbivore population. So beavers have come back into areas that they might have previously been present before the removal of the wolves. Another thing that's happened is um, the numbers of bears have increased, which is interesting because there's more berries available, which is one of the big food sources for bears at particular times of year. So again, because the herbivores have been removed, there are more berries, and so the, their bear population increases. So this one um, species, which doesn't have to be in large numbers, because they are very important in the ecosystem, by reintroducing them we've seen large effects on the rest of the ecosystem, and that's why wolves are a keystone species in Yellowstone Park.
here's an Australian species, and this time it's not an animal, it's a plant. So Banksia prionotes, I am not sure about the pronunciation there, um, it produces nectar at certain times of the year, and that is the only food that's available to honey eaters. Here's a brown honey eater on a Banksia prionotes. Honey eaters, and this is just one species, there's many species. Um, honey eaters, they eat nectar, and they're an important pollinating species because they travel from plant to plant carrying pollen from one plant to another. So a very important pollinating um, species within an ecosystem. If the Banksia prionotes disappears, then since they are the only food for honey eaters at this time of year, then the honey eater numbers would decrease as well. If those honey eater number decreases, then the amount of pollination that occurs would also decrease. And if plants aren't getting pollinated, then seeds aren't going to be produced and they won't be reproducing. So this one plant species, which again doesn't have to be in large numbers in the ecosystem, but because it provides food to another very important species in the ecosystem, the removal of the Banksia will remove the honey eaters as well, and that reduces pollination, and pollination is very, very important for plant species. Let's look at a mollusk example. Pizaster or Cratius, and again I'm not sure about the pronunciation there, it's a very common sea star. Um, I call them sea stars, not starfish. This is the term that we sh should be using, but we often don't. The reason why we don't use starfish is because they're not fish. It's found on coasts all along the Pacific Ocean, um, in Canada, all along the Pacific Ocean to California. So it's got a really large range, and it's found along the coastline. The sea star eats sea urchins, mussels, and other shellfish, um, and these don't have other predators due to their shells. So those shells make it very hard to eat, but the sea star has figured out how to eat them. Here's a picture of a sea star eating some shellfish. They have really strong uh, mouth parts which they use to break apart the shell. Um, it takes a long time but they get in there and once they get in there they eat the gooey innards. If they're removed from the marine ecosystem, the number of mussels increases significantly. Those mussels take up space. So for this ecosystem it's the space available to other species that changes. So the mussels increase, they don't have a natural predator, so they take up the space that other species would take up. So because of that, then other species start to disappear, the mussels take over. So here we have that in a picture. So here we have the starfish being present, we have uh, what it's eating, and we have, uh, say for example, we have sponges, we have uh, nudibranchs, which are a type of worm, and we have algae, uh, we have uh, chitons. So we have all this big species mix, and this is when the sea star is present. When the sea star is removed, we get the mussels overgrowing everything else. So the, the algae, here we used to have four species of algae, now we only have one, and this one overtakes the areas that the other algae were. Uh, the sponges go because the nudibranchs, um, they don't have food to eat, so they die off. So we get a huge change in the ecosystem from the removal of one species, the sea star, which is a predator on the sea urchins, mussels, and other shellfish. So, because we remove the sea star, we increase the number of mussels. Those mussels overtake all the space that's available on the seafloor, so other species can't compete with those mussels since they're not being eaten anymore. So now for the science, we'll look to keystone species. That's it for the science today. See ya! Bye.